All right, um, now that we've established the fact that because of the unequal heating of the Earth's surface, we might have like wind outside at recess, um, or we might have wind somewhere at the beach or at a mountain, and we've used some of those mountain breeze and valley breeze and sea breeze and land breeze words as we are practicing our vocabulary in Blue today, we need to look at something called global wind patterns, global wind patterns. And you can see them all here. Westerlies, easterlies, trade winds, doldrums are all things that we're going to talk about. And then we're going to do this in a culminating thing. Uh, one of my favorite projects that we do every year. We're going to watch a young lady sail from France around the world using all of these different global winds. Um, and she talks about them. And they're going to do a really fun project with that as we move on through the day. I'm looking forward to doing that later on this week. I'm going to come back to that video, obviously, and that one as well. The doldrums. I'm going to start with the doldrums. The doldrums are an area of calm weather. Okay, the trade winds come from the south and from the north. They meet near the equator. Where these two winds kind of meet, there's this updraft, this massive updraft of wind, or air, I should say, an updraft of air, but there is no real wind, Jada. Um, when this young lady is in the doldrums, you're going to realize like she sails around the world. If you don't have wind, is it really awesome to be on a sailboat? No, no. Probably not. It's really not good to be in the doldrums. Now the doldrums, um, again, you might have heard somebody say, I don't hear people say it as much, anymore, but I feel like I'm in the doldrums. That means there's really nothing going on. And you've all been there before, right? You've had Saturdays like that where you're sitting there and you're like, yep, pretty bored. Not a lot going on today, right? There's no YouTubers YouTubing. There's no streamers streaming. There's nothing on TV. We're not going anywhere. I don't have any trips planned. And I am bored. So you just annoy your parents. Pretty much. <laughs> annoy your parents. So if we were to take our map, and if we're going to mark off where this is, I don't want to be that big. Oh, that's too big. We are not talking. The doldrums are an area where there's a lot of updrafts. But boys and girls, there's really not a lot of wind. If you were a sailor, let's say you were sailing for France or Spain or England back in the day and you were exploring the world, how do you think it felt for people when they got into the doldrums? Right? I mean, now again, are there some like, light wind? Yes, but nothing like being out on the open ocean where it's like you're on a sailboat and you're being pushed along. I can imagine that would be a very scary place to be. You're in a sailboat with no wind. You're stuck in the middle of the sea. Like, that's not a very good spot to be. It is a bad place to be. It is. It's a very terrible place to be. And you can see, I mean, like, to get to some places, right? And this, I mean, if you look, like, if you're, like, down in, like, South America and a little further down, like, you could get there pretty quickly. And it wouldn't be a good thing. So the doldrums. Doldrums are a place where there's a lot of updrafts, not a whole lot of wind going on. Probably not the most important place that we're going to study, but 
when you're doing your project this week, maybe next week, probably this week, um, you'll want to know about that. Now, the trade winds are extremely important. What did they do a lot of back in the day? They traded. Guess what winds they used to sail when they were trading? The trade winds, exactly. The trade winds are winds that uh, move toward the equator. They're warm, steady breezes. They blow almost all the time. This is not a place where, you know, you would really be worried about not having wind. They blow pretty much all the time. We're not going to get into the Coriolis effect today, but because of the Coriolis effect, the trade winds typically blow towards the west, which is pretty awesome if I'm coming from England to the New World, right? I want to go which way? West. And so this would help me out. And if you notice here, and maybe I can go back and you can see a little bit better picture here. Do you see the direction of the trade winds? They blow from east to west. So if I look at this, and I'm going to copy that, the trade winds, I'll try to copy the colors, kind of blow in this. Do you see this kind of general curving direction that they do? They curve and kind of blow a little bit towards the equator. They blow a little bit towards the equator. You see that? And make sure that I do not. I'm trying to make sure. That, yeah, it's just coming up that way. So I don't want to draw that the wrong way. Trade winds blow from the east to the west, and these are the winds that back in the day people would use to um, follow the trade routes and help them go from the east to the west, and they would be able to travel around a little bit. Everybody got a chance to copy that down? I'll pause the video. Now this, you can argue this, Nicola, but the reason why I'm going to say this is the most important, and I want you to put a star beside this, um, the prevailing westerlies are what bring us the weather across the United States. They move weather across the United States. Now, again, yesterday I wasn't so worried about the background of the map. We were coloring the map as far as um, like how cold and hot it was near the equator. Today, I needed the map to be a little bit more accurate. These prevailing westerlies, you can see here's the United States. They are what move the weather across the United States. So if we have bad storms out west, more than likely, Mason, they're going to make it our way. We do have a jet stream that can influence that every once in a while. But more than likely... They're going to bring it out our way. So why is this one so important? And it's so important that I'm actually going to put a big red star beside it as well. Move west to east. And they move weather across. Okay, they move weather across the United States. The prevailing westerlies are probably the most important.
Sorry, I bled off into the ocean over there. But it'll be fine. Prevailing westerlies. They move air west to east. While you guys are copying that down, we'll get this next thing ready for us. Nope. There we go. That and the Coriolis effect is a big reason why, yes. And we'll, we're going to watch a video about that in a second. That's pretty tough. We'll spend some time on that. Prevailing westerlies. Who needs another minute on that? Anybody else? Everybody good? All right. The polar easterlies. Okay, I think this kind of tells you exactly what it does, right? Well, they're polar, so they're cool air. They're easterlies. They blow to the east. They are kind of weak. They blow east to west. So if I were to color the polar easterlies in, they're going to look kind of like this. They blow east to west. Now, here's some things that you need to kind of understand as we're looking at this. And I start running out of time on my video, which is fine. Notice how, let me find a cool color. Notice how in here, this air is sinking towards the equator. Do you see that? Do you know why it's doing that? because cool air sinks, right? And we know we're warmest along the equator. Now, if you look up here, is the air in the temperate regions warmer than it is in the polar regions above it? Yes, what does warm air do? Warm air rises, and that's why it kind of moves up this way, and then this one here, you can see cool air doing what again? Sinking down towards warmer areas, right? Because cool air sinks. And the reason why it curves is because the Coriolis effect, and I'll have to spend like a whole day on the Coriolis effect because that is, I think that's beyond fifth grade. That's like middle and high school stuff, but we got to know it because it might show up on the test. Sound good on that? So doldrums, trade winds, polar easterlies, and prevailing westerlies. The one Carter that I would worry about the most, prevailing westerlies. Prevailing westerlies. This one right here. Because it shows up the most on the test and stuff. 